Hi, this is Care Hart, and I'm about ready to get cutting. On one of my previous videos, I showed you how I created the pattern that I plan on making the quilt with. And on this one, these are the cuts that I need to make. I decided I want to do I Love You to the Moon and Back first, which means I need my cuts, even though I on the quilt it's going to show up as 6x6, six six, I gave myself a half an inch for the seam, so I need it to be 7x7 seven seven inches. Which means, since this is only six inches wide, I'm going to need to use my cutting mat to help me square off. And that's okay. Okay, so I've sped up this video because it is kind of boring watching me cut, but what you'll notice is that the salvage or the piece that tells you what the brand is of the material, that's at the top of my cut on my first cut. And then at the bottom is the folded part, like when you buy it from the store. And I use my ruler to align to the bottom uh, on the fold. And then I cut up from the fold and away from me towards the top of the selvage. And so you can see me doing that over and over again on this. And clearly I need to change my cutting blade because you'll see me have to make multiple passes. But no sense in messing with that here. Okay, so this piece is a square, so I don't have to worry so much about the placements of the Mickeys on this because it was a size where I knew I was going to have a good pattern of Mickeys. And because this piece is the completely random polka dot, I can cut this one quickly because I don't have to worry about uh, which angle or which which way it goes. But now, as you see, I'm working on this piece where you remember... Um, the image was exactly three inches across from, you know, the white to white zone, and we're cutting this piece to four inches. Well, in order for me to do that, I actually end up having a lot of waste, which don't worry, it's not going to be waste. I'm going to definitely use this in other projects. But what I have is uh, a centered Mickey, which gives me... Um, a way to do a four inches across where the center of this Mickey line uh, is with in the middle of those four inches. And so I'm using my ruler, the top of the ruler, to give me that best center I can do. And then I trim up the sheet to realize that if I cut down using my regular scissors, um, you know, half the Mickey off and put this in the center, then I can fit enough of my uh, required strips. Because remember, I'm using a lot of strips on this one. Um, and so this does actually waste, now that I'm looking at this design, this does actually waste more material where I have to use it in other projects that are not going to make it to its quilt. Um, but it looks so good when it's centered like this. Holy smack of ginolis, I'm on my last couple of cuts. It's so exciting. So now I am about to cut these. So my phone died when I was going through the cuts and I realized I can't do that over again because it's not like I'm going to have all kinds of extra paper to show you the cuts. So what I'll do is I'll cut these four pieces out for you. And the ones I'm working on now are these four in the center, which are the hardest ones. Um, and that's it. And so these four, the reason they're the hardest ones is because they're each different, not that it's actually hard. So I'm going to find out which way I want to cut them to make sure I don't accidentally make the back of my quilt more difficult than it needs to be. So remember, my quilt needs to be 36 inches wide, which I know I have my ruler somewhere. Oh well, I'll do it this way. Oh, it's out there. I see it. Okay. So we have 24, 34, 42, 42 inches wide. So if it's 42 inches wide, I can't afford to cut it widthwise. This way, so I can't cut it, I can't cut it lengthwise. Does that make sense? So that means I'm going to have to pick a good spot here 
and make sure that I have more than 48 inches to go here. Let me move my pokies out of the way so I don't end up pokeying myself. Seems like something I might do. But we'll be getting to that step very soon. Okay, lengthwise. Let's see how far we are. 24. 48. And that gives me, ooh, this much to work with. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so what I'm going to do is remember that I'm working from the bottom first of all. And know that I need this piece, this piece. I can't use the one next to it. And I'll need this piece and this piece. So... I need at least a half an inch over the top of that one. It just doesn't fail. Every time I try to start something today, I get a phone call. All right, so here we go. I need this one and this one. This one and this one, which means I'm cutting all the way to here. And we'll cut this off. Right about there. All right. Seems like such a waste to just grab these few. And I'm not going to trim this to the perfect size until the very end, but this is the back, like I said. I'm working off of these measurements. And these goofy pictures. I know I don't have mad drawing skill. It helps me know what it is I was doing. All right, so this guy right here. Oh. Crap, I am going to have to cut more off. Because he is invaded here. That blows. So to really trim this out the way I wanted to trim it out, that blows. So I might change the design on the fly. How much do I have here? So if I did from here down and eight inches, eight inches across, four inches wide, I'd get this one and this one. And then I'd still need two inches up top and two inches on the bottom. And that'd give me seven, not eight inches if I cut out at eight. All right, changing it up on the fly or cutting more out. That's the question. I wish I knew how to do that applique stitch that some people know how to do. I just don't know that. I could go learn it, but I don't want to be messing with this baby's quilt. So that's what I say. I say we trim it off at 8. And I just change it up here and here. And I'll put these extra Mickeys I accidentally cut. In 1 and 12, that works. No, I just don't like that. It's just too much of the same because then this extra Mickey would be here and here. Oh, I don't like that. No, nope, this is the way it's going to be. I'm just going to have to cut more out. That's how it's going to be. And let's take my ruler. I have a square edge up top. I could just square off my inch all the way from this square and see how big I am. One, 
two, three, plus an inch, plus an inch. That gives me exactly four inches. So it gives me four inches and a half inch on either side, I'm good with that. because all of these are four inches wide. That's why I'm just being precise on my four inches here. Now this guy is here. He is three inches wide on those lines. So I will give him his fourth inch here. And I wish I was smarter to have noticed that, that it skips one. So how wide did I say I needed him to be? So if it's wide, I need it to be five inches wide. And this is scrap. They're still cute scraps. Okay. Four inches wide. I need them to be five inches wide. My ruler is six inches wide, so I just go off. Square it up. And that will give me a nice half inch on either side here. I don't need to square these up lengthwise. Let's cut the bottom part of this one now because I'm going to need this piece, this piece. Yeah, that stinks. Man, I wish I'd have thought about that. I'd have cut it just a little bit higher and been able to do it. But that's okay. It is what it is. So we'll go to this part of the material and trim the rest. This Mickey is going to end up going all the way across. Am I perfectly lined up? No. So I'm not going to worry about my top line. I'll just create a better bottom line. Because these are not perfectly lined up. I need two more. So one, and one, and we have plenty. So if I line him up here. Trim that off. Mm 
lined him up here at five. Not four, woman, not four. There we go, line him up here at five. So this one is the same as this. So I'll have to take this guy and that guy. Um, this one's a little bit higher, so we'll take that guy. And this guy's going to go anywhere. So our lines are at here and here. This one's not going to be perfectly centered, but I can live with that. five inches here and you'll be fine five inches and then five inches so the only choice on this one is the guy in the middle. So let's give you one inch. So I'm five inches wide here. And what did I say I wanted it to be? On the table is what I said. So this one with the steamboat, he's right there. So I need him to be five inches by five inches. So let's see where five inches looks good. It was about there. Okay. And let's go to five inches here. Now I have two corners to work off of. So I know I'm nice and square. And see how he's now nice and somewhat centered. Not perfectly centered, but I think he looks good there. Yeah, that'll look good. Scraps. The next one is this one. Let's get as close as we can down to the bottom for him. And this one needs to be, this is the guy with the right there, and he needs to be six inches long. Oh, I moved my thing. Let's go up just a hair. Okay. And let's make you six inches long. Brain not working. Six inches from the bottom. There we go. And you're good right there. And that's because I want him to be five inches tall, not four inches tall. And he'll be fine like this. Okay, the next two. Which one's which? This one gives me the most space for the big guy, and you're going to be... Are you already square? 
Yes, you're already five inches. So you want to be six inches tall. Are you already square this way? I would take that as a yes. Wow. And if you're not, you're so dang close to... Yeah, you're square. All right, so if you're square from there, let's just measure you from here at six inches. Oh my gosh, did I do this at six inches? Yes, good. My ruler's six inches wide. Oh, I took the long way, that's why. And you're good at six inches. So these are my two big pieces. This is one of my little pieces. Time for my second little piece. And this guy, I have to make a whopping five inches out of him. So let's see where five inches looks good. Five inches looks good about... So that's dead center in the middle of six. So if I'm in the middle of six, and I want to go up a half an inch, that'll be good there. And I'm just eyeballing what the center looks good at, and I want this one to be five inches. Disney's Mickey Mouse. There we go. So now I have all my pieces together and all my scraps. That's a pretty good wumpin scrap right there. And these are good looking scraps. No, not so much. They're okay. Yeah, these are okay. That's a good looking scrap. I think I'll put him in the special pile. I have a special pile because I do believe I'm going to... Bam. So I have a special pile because I do believe I'm going to run out of material for my border. The trim, whatever you call that. Okay. So, let me see these pieces right here. show you what I've cut out the magic of television right there you go this is what I've cut out so these are my blocks and I need to label these four these four I'm gonna label individually simply because I do not want to mess it up I almost sat on my ruler. Don't do that. So let's label these. I have two blocks that are six inches in length by five inches in width. And this one falls on block one quantity one I have another one that's six inches by five inches that is going to be block three quantity one And then I have five inches by five inches twice. So block 10, quantity one. Five inches by five inches, 
that's on block 12, quantity 1. Now you can see how I organize all my quilt shenanigans. And this, this should help me. Okay, where's my pokey pens? I need four of them for now. Okay, so my Steamboat Willie. is block 10. There's no messing him up now. This one, where he's all drawn out, looks like that one, that's block 1. Can't mess him up now. My next step, which I will not do on camera, is to iron all of these. I do want to iron them before I piece them together. So block three is this guy with the boat. And block 12 is just to say Walt Disney is Mickey Mouse, and he's going in the bottom corner. Okay. So let me take you through what's cut out and how I have them organized. And again, here is the pattern. Block 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. The M is the I love you to the moon and back. The R is the red dots. The yellow is the one where Mickey has the background to the white. It's the classic Steamboat Willie. And so that yellow, which looks like a long hashtag there. Then in blocks. Oh, what? So the pants one just runs through the middle and then a little bit at the top and bottom. This is the pants one I refer to. And I think I've just covered them all. And then these are the centered pieces on these four squares. So let me go iron them all and then let me show you, if you're a visual person, what I have. And then I'll use the remainder of my scraps to make the border that goes around the quilt. Hopefully I'll have a lot of this red and white dot, but I did end up designing a lot of this into it, so I may not. If not, that's fine. All right. So seven inches by seven inches. Let's go through my list and make sure I have them all. Mickey with the red pants. Mickey with the red pants. Do I have any more Mickey with the red pants going once, twice, sold. Mickey with the red pants. All right. Mickey with the red pants, 12 inches in length by 4 inches wide. Oh, no, that's red polka dots. That's Mickey with the red pants here. All right, let's just put the colors together. I don't want to mess them up and... You're seeing this raw. This is just me designing. I'm not going to do a whole lot of cutting of this video. Okay, polka dots. Love you to the moon and back. That could be my border. It is neutral. Okay. This guy, this guy, this guy. Okay. Look at, I did use a lot of that red and white. I think it's because it just didn't feel like enough color without it. I don't know what my head was doing. All right, now let's count them out. I know that I have the four I need for this. So I have one five by five, two five by fives, one six by five, two six by fives. I was counting them earlier and stopped. 
So I'll just put an X here. Uh, actually, let's make it a snowflake. For both of those, those are completed. And I'll double this over because now let me just give me something to write on. Because as you can see, it leaves little marks, and I don't want to leave marks on my iron. This is an ironing pad. That's a cutting mat. All right, here we go. So these four are done. Now this is this guy. So I have two four by sevens right here. And I already noted which blocks they go on, block five and eight. So I have two four by sevens. And then I have eight. Two four by sevens. And then I have eight that are 13 by four. That's right here. I have four that are four by 13. And that's it there. That's it for that guy. Let's go to Mi Mickey with the red pants. So I have four. Mickey with the red pants is the orange P there. I have four that are four by 13. Quantity four. I have quantity two that are four by seven. Two four by sevens. And then I have my seven by seven block, quantity two. I accidentally cut too many of these, but that's okay. Okay. Love you to the moon and back. I have seven by seven, six of these. 